The Fort Worth Central City's educational development program has come into national prominence in the three years since its inception. Housed in the Ruby Williamson Elementary School building on Fort Worth's north side, the center is recognized by national education officials as the most comprehensive in the country. The Central City's program is designed to aid children from two to five years of age. The program gives children from the ghettos the background to meet middle-class education in the public schools on a solid basis. I asked program director John Barnett whether or not the program is meeting expectations. Well, we have seen the, the children uh, measure up to the anticipated uh, uh, progress uh, as hypothesized by the evaluation component of our Central Cities uh, learning system. The Central Cities Center is a school without textbooks. Not only is the curriculum written here at the center, the parents are involved at the center. The students are given four meals a day to encourage good nutrition. They sleep from 12.30 to 3 o'clock. They're here from 7 o'clock in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening to change the environment. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. In 1957, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference was formed. The Reverend Martin Luther King became a unique symbol in the Negro's determination to end desegregation and discrimination. He devised a tactic which permitted a minority to make known its protest and find redress from the majority. This tactic was nonviolent direct action, a weapon first used in Montgomery, but later used throughout the nation. Some close observers say the cause of nonviolence lost its greatest Negro apostle when the Reverend Martin Luther King was slain April 4, 1968. Reverend David Abernathy took Dr. King's place, but he lacked the charisma that Dr. King had. Only one man in the movement now has that charisma. He is Reverend Jesse Jackson, the head of the economic arm of the SCLC Operation Breadbasket. Reverend Jackson, who was on the balcony with Dr. King when he was slain, was is in Dallas today. And I would like to express to the welcoming committee a profound sense of gratitude for 
your being here, but more importantly, for your being willing to engage in this serious fight for liberation and for enfranchisement here in the Dallas area. And to let you know that you are one of about 20 chapters around the nation, faster moving toward about 40, that will join the cry of nation time as we try to connect brothers and sisters across this nation who are trapped in plights and in dilemmas similar to yours here in the city of Dallas. Uh, you need not feel lonely being trapped, but you certainly should join that driving force of persons around the nation who do not intend to be trapped any longer. The poor whites, the poor blacks, the poor Chicanos find themselves fighting each other in desperation over something that really doesn't exist. And that is enough jobs for them, enough education for them, and enough food for them. And so when we come here to join you in a, in a hunger feeding program, in a hunger project, we're telling you that some people are physically hungry. But then there are other people who are hungry for information. The poor whites don't even know who their enemy is. The Chicanos don't know who their enemy is. Many of us don't know who our enemy is. And to that extent, we are hungry for information. With a cold nip in the air, Jesse Jackson spoke to a group of about 500 West Dallas residents. He was a little late, mainly because he had to stop off and see black businessmen at noon and have a news conference this morning. He told the black businessmen that they need to get together more often and maybe even take a retreat and work on the economic problems here in Dallas. Well, unless we come together in large numbers tonight and decide that we're going to stand together, black and brown, man, woman, and child. That is why we'll say what I'm telling you now. All you black folk and brown people got the same problem. Don't get trapped into not knowing who the enemy is. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Them white is warning them buildings downtown. They tell them that truth. Them is enemy. All y'all are here in these projects in the same condition. Don't care what kind of hat you got, what kind of skin you got, what shit your nose is. You got the same problem. You understand what I'm saying? Straight hair on the crib of the stomach don't mean nothing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I am. I am. Somebody. I am. Somebody. I may be poor. I may be hungry. I may be on welfare. I am. Somebody. I am. Black. Beautiful. Proud. I must be respected. I must be protected. What time is it? Well, this is the day after. Election 70 has come. Election 70 has gone. There will be a great deal of talk about yesterday's elections. The Republican Party, according to the Democrats, was embarrassed. The Republican Party, according to the Republicans, is encouraged by the outcome and say they will have some kind of voting control, at least in the Senate. We talked today to Dallas County Republican Chairman Tom Crouch, and we posed that question, how did the election go? Needless to say, I am quite disappointed with the return. Uh, I think George Bush was a very attractive candidate, so was Paul Eggers. So we made two strong races, and we're, the Republican Party is certainly disappointed. One bright spot for the Republicans and Tom Crouch was the apparent victory by Fred Agnich over the incumbent Joe Ratcliffe for the state legislature, place six. However, Joe Ratcliffe is this afternoon here at the Records Building going over those figures. He says his opponent picked up mysteriously 6,000 votes somewhere along the way, and that was the margin of victory. I asked him if he thought there was any hanky-panky involved. No. Uh, I simply think that an error was made in uh, copying down the figures or a transposition of figures when they were taken off the machines. I uh, have no indication of any uh, irregularities, nor am I suggesting such. And there are always those races that are unopposed, such was the case of the vociferous county judge, W.L. Lou Starrett. He did pick up a write-in opponent at the last minute, and I asked him this afternoon, whatever happened to Mr. Samuel Dixon's campaign? Uh, someone told me that they had a write-in that brought on by some of the 
radicals. I sort of got a kick out of it. I didn't pay any attention to it. So here it is, the day after election 70. Time now for the explanations and the I told you so's. But there is one thing for sure, you and I will not suffer another political announcement, at least not in 1970. From the Records Building, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. Now that the smoke and the heat of yesterday's election is starting to clear, several facts are starting to come to the surface in Tarrant County. In the benson bush Eggers smith races, the candidates were pretty evenly matched. Republican County Chairman Roger Hunsaker told Channel 8 News last night during our live coverage from the Tarrant County Courthouse that Benson beat Bush because of a dynamic campaign manager in Tarrant County. Hunsaker said that Garrett Morris had put the Benson campaign on a shrewd and astute footing from the beginning. Hunsaker, in commenting on the Eggers victory in Tarrant County, said that television may have been responsible. Preston Smith does not show up well on TV, and the Eggers forces took advantage of Smith's avoidance of the media in this area to expose their candidate well. Well, hindsight is always more accurate than foresight, and one theory is as good as another in explaining an election. J. Lewis, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. This afternoon, Lubbock County District Attorney Blair Cherry Jr. and Special Prosecutor, former District Attorney Alton Griffin, rested the prosecution's case after introducing a long list of witnesses, climaxed by Locke's written confession. The defense testimony is expected to begin tomorrow. Testimony here returns again and again to a set of keys belonging to Mrs. Morgan, a set of keys missing at the time of the slaying and as yet unfound. At this moment, those keys might very easily be the ones that open or close the fate of Benjamin Locke. This is Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. I've been to South Dallas today. I have been to West Dallas today. I have been to the housing projects today. I have seen in H.L. Hunt's town white people starving. I have seen Chicanos and Indians and black people starving in one of the richest cities in the world. Dallas is a wicked city. I've seen airports prepared to expand so as to help other people leave fast and fly over quicker. I've seen gigantic skyways expressing themselves high above the reality of basic everyday American urban life. Well, one of the things we found today is that one of the reasons for the gaps, and I think there's more than one, is stereotypes we have about each other. You know, each other's appearance, each other's language, each other's lifestyle, and we don't take any time to find out who we are, what we are, and what we really believe. What do you believe is the, is the answer to this sort of thing? Well, I think the answer is to do more thing meetings like we did today, in which youngers and elders have an opportunity to really get to know each other, to work together, to talk together, to eat together and to make plans to work on some of the problems together. Now, do you think that the gap is, is uh, insurmountable or do you think that we really have a chance in, in getting together the young and the, the older people together? I'm sure it's not insurmountable. We mounted it today and I would say that one can bridge the gap. I'm not looking to close it. So we talk about jobs, we're talking about 
345 times $8,000 a year starting salary, not to mention the psychological implication of bigger slaughtering over our children with the free reign to shoot us in the back at will. Less than 30 firemen in a city that has more than 1,500. Now, I don't want to argue about qualifications because I know that we got the ability to put out fire. I, I don't want to argue about our ability to pass the police test. I talked with young men today who were military police in Vietnam. I know they can be civilian police at home. walking around Dallas today, managed to get a set of counts of 11 people, only one of them black. We'll do at least three, maybe four, but there's a scheme, not against communism, but against democracy. I don't think there's any question that the next three games are the big games in our schedule. Each team, New York, uh, St. Louis, and Washington, uh, must defeat us since we're defending champions. And as we go into these cities, uh, we either are going to eliminate them or set them back uh, drastically in these games, of course, or we'll be in trouble ourselves. So these are big games. What's it like playing the Giants at Yankee Stadium when they have a full game winning streak? Well, it's just like nothing that you'll see all any place else. Uh, New York is a uh, like any other fan; they'll boo you if you're not playing well. But if you're doing well, uh, they're a very enthusiastic type of audience, and I've seen them many times when they come out of the stands, which hopefully they don't do come Sunday because it can be very rough when it happens. But I think you'll see a tremendously uh, exciting football game in New York. Do you plan any lineup changes for this week, coach? Uh, we haven't yet decided for sure on a lineup change. There could be a possibility of our line uh, that we might put Neely into the tackle spot and Nye into the guard, mainly because Tony Licio has had back trouble and he's still having some problems. And uh, if these other fellows are healthy, we may move him into the lineup for this game. Coach Wild, neither Garrison or Thomas relative to the situation. Does the head coach enjoy having two good running backs at one position? I would much rather have two at, at, uh, running at one spot than not to have uh, any. There are actually one, but I think in Garrison and Thomas's case, uh, Walt knows that he's coming off an injury, and when he comes off an injury, it takes some time to get back into the groove again. And Thomas has been running exceptionally well, and of course he'll continue to play as long as he can hold off Garrison. I guess uh, a hit pointer is one of the more painful things that can happen to a football player. You have to look at it, it's just a small bruise on the top of your hip, but it actually paralyzes your whole half of your stomach and half of your back. And uh, it's pretty hard to move around for a week or two after. But I feel pretty good now. I'm very careful against Philadelphia. <laughs> and uh, You mean avoiding me, Lee, or? Uh, <laughs> it's avoided everybody. <laughs> As the fellows pointed out. By invitation only, 150 black businessmen were invited to the Cavalier restaurant to hear Jesse Jackson. Jesse has brought out an unusual array of adversaries, people that have never gotten together before, have gotten together to hear the head of Operation Breadbasket, Jesse Jackson. Everybody busy ain't no businessman. That's the other part of it.
and, and, and just, you know, not shaving and wearing long hair, looking mean don't make you meaningful. <laughs> because I, I've been listening to a, you know, you know, I've been listening to a lot of funny stuff all day, and I didn't hear it. Everybody in here is each other's problem. You know, the bourgeois is the problem, and the businessman is the problem, and the reverends is the problem, and the teachers is the problem. And I ain't heard a nigga mention H.L. Hunt's name yet. <laughs> Since I've been in town. <laughs> He's as safe as a babe in his mama's womb while we run around yeah. trying to scare each other, look at me. Now until you want to deal with that cracker, don't be running up trying to scare us, looking funny in some meeting. You know who got the money that you need. It ain't in this room. You know who control the education that you need. It ain't at this school over here. Now, I hope to go in a little detail tonight on knowing your enemy. This luncheon today brought together several unusual personalities, members of the Black Panther Party, members of the Black Muslim Society, and black politicians as well as businessmen. The Reverend Jesse Jackson told them all that they need to get together, not just for such a freakish event as the visit of the head of Operation Breadbasket, they need to get together for a retreat and work out all their problems to develop the black economy in Dallas that is so desperately needed. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is Jess Brown.